Margie here and I'm here to talk about books that will help you cope with your seasonal affective disorder. Um, so in the northern hemisphere it is now winter and in the winter a lot of people are afflicted by what is called seasonal affective disorder which is basically when it is dark for the most part um, you get kind of sad um, and I go through this myself in the winter and I have a hard time in the winter because it is dark and it is cold and it is bleak outside and it is depressing. So I have nine books to talk to you about today. I have broken them down into three different categories depending on what you might need to combat your sadness or your depression or whatever it may be. This doesn't necessarily only apply to seasonal affective disorder, it's just tis the season. The first category I have are books that will inspire you. The first book I want to talk about is a book that I talk about all the time and I'm gonna talk about it some more. I just raved about this in a video I just filmed. I don't know if it's up yet or not, but this is Tiny Beautiful Things, Advice on Love and Life from Dear Sugar by Cheryl Strayed. This is a nonfiction book. It is a compilation of advice columns that Cheryl Strayed wrote as she was writing as Sugar, and it is amazing and it will change your life. And a lot of people write in with a lot of different issues from failing marriages to kind of coping with their sexuality to all kinds of different things and Cheryl Strayed gives wonderful and amazing and insightful and very blunt advice where she's like you can do it we can all do it we all have our problems it's gonna be great so I highly recommend that you read this if you're feeling a little sad it might make you a little bit sadder but at least it will make you feel not so alone the next book I have is a graphic memoir and this is marbles mania depression Michelangelo and me which is a graphic memoir by Ellen Forney and this I read recently in October I believe and it was amazing um, so this is a memoir about Ellen Forney's battle with uh, bipolar disorder and how that affected her as an artist and how the different therapies and the different drug treatments she underwent affected her as a person and her ability to function in society as well as kind of her fear that if she took medication for her mental illness she would no longer be able to create which is what she loves doing and it goes through all of that. It's a really really awesome book, um, really true to life and just beautiful. So again this is something that you can definitely kind of read to understand that you are not alone and it will also inspire you to you know be who you are and deal with your mental illness if you may have one in the way that's best for you but also in a safe way that doesn't harm you or the people around you. Lastly, I have Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic, which is Creative Living Beyond Fear. And this is a wonderful little book, and I highly recommend the audio edition of this as well. And this is really just about creating and about putting yourself out there and about how sometimes, you know, you can be this amazing creative person, but sometimes the forces of the universe are against you and sometimes they're really with you. And you never know when inspiration is going to strike or how it's going to come to you and it's just a really lovely book. So this especially if you are a creative person or someone who kind of deals with your emotions through a creative outlet as I feel many people are, I highly recommend this. It will inspire you to get out there and create some things and kind of accept life as it comes to you and accept your art as it comes to you as well. The next category is kind of a bummer, but if you're like me and when you are depressed you like to read really sad things <laughs> because you want to be sad, which is fine and that's, you know, a different, everyone has different coping mechanisms, but I get like that. I read a lot of sad books because sometimes I am sad. Um, so I have three books in this category as well. Uh, the first one I have is All of Kittredge by Elizabeth Strout. This is kind of a crossover between a short story collection and a novel where there are different stories that focus on different characters but they're all kind of set in this very small town in the northeast and they kind of revolve around the main character Olive Kittredge. Um, the reason I recommend this book is A because it's great in wintertime and B it's kind of just like this bleak outlook on these characters lives and especially all of Kittredge's life and how they all interact and come together and I find it heartwarming in its loneliness, if that makes sense. If you want to get really mad about the world and really depressed about some shit, you should probably read Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Um, again, I picked this up because I do think that 
uh, Dickens is awesome winter reading and Hard Times is a very accessible book of his. So this book is set in a factory town and it features all kinds of sad and lonely characters and also hateful and terrible characters who take advantage of people's poverty and are manipulative and just horrible and yeah it's I mean really classic Dickens with kind of this look at the inner workings of society and especially around industry and how that's affecting you know the average person's life so I do recommend that if you're in the mood and then if you really want to get sad like really sad <laughs> And you want to do it in like an afternoon, like one sitting sadness. You just, you want to sit down for an hour and a half and then just be like obliterated by sadness. <laughs> you should read Ethan Frome by Edith Wharton. This is a little novella about a character named Ethan Frome and his wife and what happens to them when his wife's cousin comes to stay with them. Um, again, this is set in the winter, so I think that these are kind of sad books that I also found appropriate for wintertime. But if you want to realize that your life is not the most depressing life and that maybe people have more depressing lives than you, this is the one. Then lastly, to cheer things up a bit, I have a selection of books for when you want to escape. So these are fantasy books and I find that sometimes when I'm depressed I really just want to dive into a completely different world and forget about this one. So I think that these will help you out with that. First recommendation is the Fairyland series by Catherine M. Valente, which is one of my favorite, favorite all-time middle grades fantasy series. Um, this is the first book, which is the girl who circumnavigated Fairyland in a ship of her own making, and it follows our protagonist, September, who is living a quiet, peaceful life in Nebraska. All of a sudden, she is swept away to this magical world and, you know, has to go on a quest. Um, Catherine and Valente's Fairyland is so beautiful and so intense. You can really emerge yourself in this world. And there are five books in the series, so why stop after the first one? You can just keep going. Next, I have a book that you've probably heard about, but I haven't actually talked about much on my channel, and it is a favorite of mine, and that is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Um, I love this book. This is kind of a darker fantasy book. It centers around a circus that pops up in the middle of the night. Nobody knows where it came from. And it's an extremely magical circus. It's very dark. Uh, this follows two young magicians who are kind of being mentored by two different mentors, and they make they create exhibits in the circus. So this is a stunning book. This is one of those books that you get so fully wrapped up in the world and the atmosphere of this book that even when you put it down, you kind of like walk around in a daze and still kind of feel very attached to this world. You want to get back to it right away. So as far as escapism goes, you can't really beat this. And lastly, I have a nice kind of cozy and upbeat fantasy for you, which is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. This is the story of a boy who's very much in love with the girl who lives in the same small village as him. And she's one night they are talking and a shooting star falls from the sky and she says, if you bring me that star, I'll marry you. And he's like, all right. So he goes on a hunt for the star and it becomes very magical and really beautiful. It's nice and fast moving and it's not too deep or hard to get into. So I think that this is also a great option for those sadder winter months. So that's all I have for you today. If you have any recommendations for books that kind of make you feel better when you're coping with some hard times or just feeling really down, please do let me know in the comments and I will be back very soon. Thank you all for watching. Bye.